Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you uh, for joining us tonight. Tonight is the September 24th, 2015 meeting of the East Fishfield Town Board. Would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, first, under supervisors, oh, I would like to mention uh, we have some friends of ours here today from the Sons of Italy. I believe if our friends would like to just step up to the podium here, um, always happy to have you here. Good evening. My name is Donna Teresi. I'm the president of the Sons of Italy, and with me is Jeannie and Anthony Di Casanza. And this evening, um, we're here to present you with two checks. Um, not only are we here to promote our culture, but more important here to support our community. Just like you, Mr. Hickman, you have yeah. been a great support to us. And so you. has everyone on the board here through our golf outings and everything we do. And we can't thank you enough. And to our police department and EMS who went above and beyond, they are true friends of this community. And we want to thank them and acknowledge. We have two checks for you this evening. One is for $1,000 for Julie's Jungle and wow. another $1,000 for you guys to use at your own discretion. Wow. We really love you guys, wow. and thank you for all you do. Your commitment yeah. is unbelievable to us. Well, thank, you. thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. You, know, if you, you can give them to the clerk. She always collects all the checks. It's at the end, the end, of, the, end of the table here. You know, the way I look at our town is like we're, we are a big family. You know, and we're all in this together, and, um, and I always appreciate our relationships with the Sons of Italy. So thank you very much. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Mark, she's got money. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. You should have given Mark us saw the, that come. The controller is now <laughs> taking it from the clerk, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Next year is the controller. Thank you. Thank very, you. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. You. <laughs> that, that was very nice. That was very nice. Um, Oh, well, I'm glad we got some money because the state controller has issued, <laughs> uh, uh, has, has uh, sent me an email the other day. I got an email from the state controller out of the blue. I really didn't expect this email. Um, New York State Controller's Office sent me an email saying that they've uh, reviewed a report on us and designated us as signif uh, significantly fiscally stressed, which I was kind of shocked about because I think that we're in pretty good shape um, being as we have a fund balance. So. Uh, Mark and I reviewed the controller's report, and uh, the controller's report, they note that our fund balance dropped from $1.8 million in the beginning of 2014 to $1.2 million at the end of 2014, based on a report that we submitted last spring. A fund balance is basically money, it's, it's like a surplus we build up over the years, mm -hmm. and it's like you have money in a savings account, like tomorrow I have to get tires in my truck. So I have a little money because I save up for it. And that's what really the fund balance does. It allows us to do these things which we need to do, which we don't necessarily budget for, or sometimes goes over budget. So um, <clears throat> I was a little surprised. Now much of the, we, Mark and I looked at, Mark, our controller and I looked at it, much of the reason, reason for this drop can really be summed up in one phrase, snow removal. Uh, the 2014 winter was much more difficult than we had anticipated. We had budgeted, <clears throat> excuse me, $825,000 and the total cost was a little over $1.2 million. So that was a lot of the drawdown from the fund balance. And we use fund balance to finance snow removal, and I'm not even gonna talk about this year's budget, this year's winter, but that's, uh, that's another, another story. Um, in the past, we had a big storm. I can't remember when it was, 2010, 2000, I remember the big storm. It was really located over East Fishkill took in a lot of trees. And what happens is when we have uh, storm damage like snow removal or tree damage, nobody helps us. You know, basically we're in the sometimes FEMA will come in, super storm, something or other. Um, but really, we're basically on our own. So that year, I forget, what was it? What was that? It was 2010. 2010, we had a lot of damage. Dollars. And I think it cost us a little over $800,000 for the cleanup. Right. Um, and that year, we looked at the highway budget, and we, we took out a three-year budget note for that. Yeah, and paid that right off. Yeah, you remember we did that, but yep. the next three years we paid off that storm. So, you know, we have done that. We actually discussed that with this, with this, this previous storms. Well, you knew we were having revenue coming in. 
So we decided to save the expense of uh, funding a loan and the interest payments, and we just took it out of the fund balance. We know we have money co revenue coming in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, at the end of this year, we project we're going to have about a two million dollar, two million two million dollars in our fund balance. So we're very, I think we're fiscally very well off. They just don't take this into account up the controller's office. Um, we also use fund balance for community projects, such as we have 300,000 that's outstanding for the development of the Cannon well fields across the street. Um, oh, excuse me, and we have two others. $100,000 for grant applications for Hillside Lake and $30,000 for development of our economic industrial zone redevelopment plan. Now these monies will be reimbursed when these projects are funded and represent an investment in our community. Now, none of this is taken into account when the controller reviews their report. They just look at their report. I would mention that last week we received our final payment from FEMA for work done after Hurricane Irene to repair the East Hook Road and culvert. Um, totally wiped out East Hook Road and the culvert down there uh, at the end of the town. Now, that was a $180,000 job. <clears throat> And we use fund balance for that also. We just received our last check last week. If we waited for FEMA to reimburse us, people would still be using East Mountain Road as a detour. So this is what we use our fund balance for. Um, and again, like I say, the state controller doesn't take this into account. We know the big picture. They look at a snapshot in time. So um, we're very comfortable at the end of this year, we're gonna have $2 million in our fund balance. And I, the controller doesn't know that, but I just wanna let everybody else know that. So. That's my comment, <clears throat> excuse me, on the uh, State Comptroller's report. I did want to give a quick update on Hope or Precision Water Project. Um, we've been working very hard with EPA and CDM, that's the engineers on the project, to bring the water uh, from the Cannon Well Field up to the Superfund site. And uh, we needed to have 95% 95 per 95 completion of the design plans. Um, we are on track to have that done. Our engineers have worked very hard with <clears throat> CDM, the EPA uh, engineering firm. So I think we're going to make the deadline. And I believe next month they're going to meet. Uh, con it's a congressional panel. We'll meet to review EPA fight sites that will be funded. So I think we're in good shape with that. And when you go back to fund balance, excuse me, <clears throat> we use $300,000. If we did not use that to develop the well fields across the street, we would not be talking about having an application to EPA because without a water source, there was no application. So this is a very important investment in our community. So just wanted to mention that. 95%, they were a little skeptical, but we made it. Um, two last things. Oh, one last thing. Uh, there's going to be a public workshop by New York State Department of Transportation on the Route 376 intersection at Robinson Lane. We've been, I've been after DOT to do something about this for many, many years. Um, they finally stopped in about two, three months ago, said there's an actual project they're planning. Uh, they're going to have a public workshop. It will be at the Fishkill Plains Elementary School uh, Thursday, October 22nd. The workshop will start at 6.30 p.m., uh, goes to 8 p.m. And they're going to bring out a couple of, um, they're going to present a couple options for the project, what they'd like to see done. But anybody that's going out Fishco Plains between like 4 in the afternoon till 6.30 in the afternoon knows there's a real problem out there. So this is very good news, and I'd urge anybody interested in that to attend. So I believe that's it for tonight. Oh, I was a little late getting in here tonight. Excuse me, I just received... Um, an email from Congressman Maloney's office. They want an update from us on the Hillside Lake grant application. Uh, we have heard from FEMA, and they had four questions they asked us. Um, out of the four questions, our people responded that three of the answers are already in the application. The fourth question was just a short little question about the timeline. We submitted all that back to FEMA. So I just re uh, sent that back to Congressman Maloney's office. So I think we've answered all of FEMA's questions on the Hillside Lake grant and uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. So, that being said, Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Councilperson Cassidy. Present. Councilperson D'Alessandro. Present. Councilperson Franco. Present. Councilperson Marinaro. Present. Supervisor Hickman. Present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, the minutes, we appreciate that the board has been uh, received copies of the minutes of the August 27, 2015 meeting. Madam Clerk, have there been any changes, additions, or modifications to those minutes? No, there has not. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the August 27, 2015 meeting? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Under receipt and file, I believe we have none tonight, Madam Clerk? No, we do not. Okay. Public comments on agenda items only. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak on any of the items on our rather short agenda? We only have three items on the agenda. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak on any items on the agenda? Okay. There being none? Oh, I'm sorry. You, you, you have to step up to the podium, sir. Um, may I make a comment before you go into a big thing about Stone? Going up to the, to the podium. Um, I received a letter, um, just so everybody's aware, I'll make the board aware. I received a letter requesting an extension. Typically, what has happened in the past, Jeffrey, is it? Yes, Jeffrey. What has happened in the past, and it's really kind of irritates me a little bit, is developers will be doing a project, and when it gets towards winter time, when it's time to start on the road, they make a big rush and they turn to, you know, try to turn the road over to the town. And we had gotten later and later in the year. So we, we set a deadline of October 1st for not accepting roads. Um, and also, logistically, the highway superintendent has to make adjustments to the driver's routes and everything. So we tried to set a, 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 a deadline. Um, but that being said, I have received two requests for extensions tonight. Um, from Stone, Stone Ridge, is it? Yes. That's Stone Ridge. I always say Stone Ledge. It's Stone Ridge. From Stone Ridge and Eagles Ridge uh, subdivisions. Um, I, I'm not happy that I'm getting these from the developers, but I would not want to penalize the people in these developments. Um, I would like the developers to know there's a deadline. But that being said, I don't want to penalize the homeowners that have moved in and are enjoying their house and their property. So Jeffrey, before you get going, I just want you to know, and I'm going to let the board know, I'm going to request a 30-day extension because of the homeowners, because we received quite a few calls from homeowners in these, in these, prop, in these projects. Um, if the board is okay with that, I would like to give a 30-day extension to wrap everything up and we'd accept these roads at that time. Now, Jeffrey, you can go ahead, but I just want to let you know where I'm, where I'm coming from with this. No, I, I appreciate that. Um, I just want to state that uh, we've lived in the development for seven years now, um, and we've been eagerly awaiting this to be adopted by the town, so yeah. the town will be plowing our roads, we can get our mail at our the house. Mail, the school buses, Exactly. I My know. kids have already gone out of uh, elementary know. school waiting for these buses to come yeah. to our door. So. Um, I would hate that a couple of days, and, and I'm, I'm vexed with the developer doing this at the last minute as well, but it appears to us in the development that everything that has been asked to be done has been done. Yeah. Um, I, I th felt that the, the last uh, problem with the, the grading it was a minor thing that mm -hmm. I, the, the, I can't speak for all the neighbors, but I myself have seen him pack the dirt, sure. fill it in, and everything looks fine to me. Yep. And yeah. I'm just very eager for the town to adopt this so that this winter, we don't have to go another winter without being Understood. city flower. Understood. And I think the mail, yes, that's a nuisance. Really worries me is the children waiting for the bus. I'd yes. much rather that they had regular bus stops at the houses or along the route. So. And there's a lot of new little kids that have moved into the neighborhood. We have a whole other generation yeah. that will be going into elementary school. And it's really the thought of going another winter Without yeah. oh. the city plowing, yeah, is exceedingly vexing. Yeah. Seven years is long enough to wait. Understood. Thank Understood. You. And I can't say because we haven't gotten to that part of the <laughs> of the agenda yet. But my intention is to ask the board for a 30-day extension for both of these subdivisions to allow them to wrap everything up. Because again, we don't want to penalize the homeowners. Um, we wish the developers would get their timetables a little bit more correct. And that's where we are. So. Anybody else in the audience like to speak on any agenda items? Okay. There being none, uh, we'll move to public hearings. The first uh, public hearing is a public hearing to consider amending wetland laws to provide protection of municipal wells within 300 foot radius thereof. Now, when I first took office, well, we've always been looking at wells and water, we have situations. The newest one that has risen is Fishkill Plains. Fishkill Plains water was probably created, 
I would say back in the 70s sometime, and of course when they divide out a well field, um, they don't use the criteria that the DEC or the Board of Health has today for drilling a well. So Scott, if you want to talk a little bit about area protection, um, which is I think what this is all about. Yes. Um, and pull the microphone over to you. As we've discussed in the past at Fishkill Plains, we've uh, drilled a third well uh, to help meet our redundancy needs. Uh, we, we, we know we want to get water to Revere Park, and there's some other we, projects in the we area. We really want to get water yes. to Revere We have a 10-foot section of pipe right. to get water to Revere Park, and I find this exceedingly frustrating. Right. So, so as part of that, we drilled the third well. Uh, it's a posted stamp of a property that we have there. And way back when, the requirement was 200 feet for separation. And now the new standards require 300 feet of separation. So that was really the beginning of, of taking a look at all our well sources throughout the town. And you know, really what's good for one well source mm -hmm. should be good for all of them. Yeah. To say that we need to provide you know, 300 foot of protection. Now in some cases, you know, we have homes and sheds and backyards that are already within that 300 feet. Right. And what this does for those people, there are know, exceptions in this law. There are exceptions to that, but, them. but we don't want them to start bringing bulk oil storage, mm -hmm. uh, you know, any kind of contaminants or pathogens into those areas. So anyone who is within the 300 feet is basically grandfathered. You can keep your shed, you can keep your yard, your pool, etc. Yeah. Uh, any new pr kind of project that might come within the 300 feet, you know, we'll take a closer look at. Uh, recently, there was the a discussion at Little Switzerland to protect that well, where uh -huh. we looked at actually buying, you know, that, that property adjacent to provide, you know, additional separation. Had this law maybe been enacted then, you know, the outcome of that might have been different because they're within the 300 feet now. Shoot. But so anyway, this is a, a new requirement uh, from the DEC, and because it is a new well, uh, this is what they're requiring. Okay. And again, anybody that a butts a well field is grandfathered in basically it's not going to affect anybody correct but if somebody wants to bring a 55 gallon drum of oil and put it in build their a new house we're going to have a problem with that within kind 300 of feet they can't put the yeah. new septic but if your septic's within 300 feet now you're fine yeah. and because fish oil planes <laughs> triggered it it does make sense to do for all of our well i think we have 10 water systems yes. all of our 10 water systems well again little switz and we looked at a couple of years trying to have yeah. protection for that so yeah. it'll apply to all of them yeah okay and i reviewed the law and, and i think the exceptions cover the people to be grandfathered in uh, the board have any questions just that, is this the final hurdle? We meet the DEC's oh. requirements for the... Could I? Yeah. It never seems like there's a final hurdle, does uh. it? This is one of the final hurdles. One of the final hurdles. Yeah. So what has happened? And we're talking... I find this exceedingly frustrating, but unfortunately, the Dutchess County Department of Health has determined that the Fishkill Plains wells need extra filtration above and beyond what we installed, which we installed, what, four years ago, three, yeah. four years ago. Th this will satisfy But the this D is one step. This satisfies the DEC, yeah. but then we're still left with the health department, and the health department's requiring additional filtration. That yeah. So this will get the third well online? No, no, this requires the DEC to get their sign off, but we still need the health department sign off, and that's okay. where the additional filtration comes in. Okay. Back when the original wells were drilled, they were less than 50 foot deep into gravel. And at that time, there was no more or less mandatory filtration for surface water influence. Which is what they are. They're but not rock In today's wells. age, yeah. if you're less than 50 feet, it's pretty much mandatory. So we did some sampling, mm -hmm. and they, they referred it back up to the state health department's scientists who, you know, analyzed all the data. And in their opinion, you know, the, the well has the potential to be influenced by surface water. Yeah. So, so therefore, needing further so filtration. So therefore, we need, we need, and at that point, because the existing wells are about the same depth, if not shallower, and in the same aquifer, uh, it'll treat all the water. Even though those wells have been lined for, been online for probably exactly. 40 yeah. years. The minute you drill a new well or yeah. take yeah. a new action, yeah. then you fall into all the current standards. Yeah. yeah. Don't you love government? So this is satisfy the hurdle with the DC. Yeah. So we're still left with the health department. Yeah, but we are seeing somewhat of a light at the end of the tunnel. So. But if we put in, if we dig the new well, they're not going to let us dig the new well? Well is in, well it's is in. tested, well is in. No, but and we will get way, it online. Is yes. there any way to test that yeah. and run that well? And maybe we, if we deep the other ones, we don't need the filtration system? Well, we, we, can't, go any, we can't go any uh, deeper. On the first two? 
No. 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 Okay. Here, here's the risk. Right now, our well is right down to like basically rock. Okay. Once you start drilling through the rock, there's no telling what kind. You could go down 600 feet. Yeah, no. But on top of the rock, there's an ocean of water in that gravel. So we have plenty of source capacity. The issue is because it's only 50 foot deep, you can get potentially influence from the surface water. So going deeper is not the answer. We've gone as deep as we can, knowing the amount of water that we have. Again, a rock well is a whole new risk. You could drill five rock wells trying to find water. Okay. Uh, the filtration, we have the same filters at Four Corners. You know, it's a cartridge. You replace the cartridge every six months. You know, yeah. it, it's something that we can, we can install. We, we did sampling of the existing two wells. We went through a 12-month monitoring program, and at the end of the day, the health department would not make a decision one way or the other whether they were or they were not. They just sat on the results. Um, now that we've got this third well, uh, I think they found a little trace of pollen, and I think based on that, they want the filtration. No. Anyway, wellhead protection is the order of the yeah. evening. We have the same issue at, at Revere Park. I mean, Revere yeah. Park is also a shallow yeah, well. But we're going to be, and the we aim have a greedy, is to We take, have a greedy issue. And yeah, but by the, connecting the aim, them, we'll put one filter system in in, the, in our main water plant mm -hmm. that we've already made yeah. a sizable investment but, but in. But the aim is to take, we take Revere out of service. And we'll take Revere that's, out of service. That's where we're going yeah, at this point. Yeah, because putting money into the Revere system makes yeah. no sense. Yeah, so that's what we're working at. Any questions on wells? <laughs> water filtration or anything anybody in the audience like to speak for or against the wellhead protection law that's before us tonight there being none do i have a motion to close the public hearing so do i have a second second all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carried do i have a motion to adopt the negative declaration and the and the law let me see what the name of the law is Freshwater wetlands, water bodies, and water courses. That's not much of a name of a law. Who wrote that law? Shouldn't be protection chat thereof? Chat. Public uh, water, water supply, supply protection. protection. All right. Do I have a motion to adopt the negative declaration and uh, local lo I'm not even going to say the number of local law. I would just say the, the wellhead protection law. So do, I have, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, second public hearing of the evening is a public hearing to allow the creation of lots in the I-1 industrial zone. Um, as everybody's aware, we are we've been changing our um, laws in the I-1 zone to be much more flexible and, and uh, hopefully encourage redevelopment of the IBM East and West uh, properties. Uh, one of the things that we had done, we changed permitted uses, and now this is something that also we feel that if we were to do this, it would help make a, a little bit more flexible as far as redevelopment of that. And um, let me skip my law here. Creation of certain lots within the I district of the town. Tom, would you give us a little bit of a background on this subdivision law before sure. us? Well, as you indicated, this is uh, for property that's already been developed uh, for redevelopment of it. And what it does is it uh, creates flexibility for the planning board. Many of the corporate world now, when they come into a uh, research park or an office park, they actually want to own the building itself for financing purposes. So this would allow the building to be on its own independent lot and for the buildings to then share the other infrastructure on the site, the parking, utilities, things like that. Uh, so this modernizes the code, which hopefully will attract more because many companies don't want to buy an entire site and lease the buildings. They prefer to sell the individual buildings. It helps with the financing, etc. It also gives a little greater flexibility while the overall site has to meet all the regular bolt and bulk and setback regulations. It gives the planning board flexibility to allow uh, mod modifications within the site to suit the various business needs. Great. Thank you. Anybody on the board, any questions for the attorney on the, uh, the uh, subdivision law in the I-Zone? We'd, we'd spoken about this for quite some time, and I think this is a great yeah. law that we could adopt to allow, uh, entice more redevelopment in our town, so. Nobody? Anybody in the audience would like to speak on the creation of lots in an I-1 industrial zone? 
There being none, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carried. Do I have a motion to adopt the negative declaration and adopt the law to allow the creation of lots in the I-1 industrial zone? So moved. And do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. That is our last public hearing of the night. To resolutions. The first resolution on the agenda tonight is accept roads in the Stone Ridge subdivision. Um, obviously, we've had a gentleman come and speak on uh, requesting the town uh, grant it some, some sort of an extension. I do have a letter from the developer requesting an extension. And also, I do have a letter in the regards to um, Eagle Ridge subdivision to request an extension. And, and as and I said before, you know, I do feel bad for the people that live in these subdivisions. I don't think it's right that, you know, I mean, granted, when you're building out a subdivision, there's a certain amount of time until you get everything done. But when the, prop, when the project is done, it should be completed, turned over to the town so the town can maintain the road. The school buses can use the road and the, mail, and the postal service too. So that being said, what I'd like to request from the board tonight is a 30-day extension um, from the October 1st to the November 1st uh, for the acceptance of roads in the Stone Ridge subdivision and the Eagle Ridge subdivision. This will be based upon review of the roads by our town engineer and by our highway superintendent. And ultimately, the highway superintendent would have to sign off because he's the one that's going to have to maintain these roads. So, um, Do I have a motion to authorize a 30-day extension? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion by the board? I, it, we're actually really talking for the October 22nd. So right. just well, 30 days. these guys know because they've got to bring us the stuff so we can vote on it to take these roads. Well, technically, up. yes. Yeah. So just, and you know what that's going to mean, Peter? I'm going to be very busy on October 22nd because I have to be over to the DOT meeting yep. for about a half hour, and then I'm going to have to rush over here. Yeah. But you're absolutely so right. Just I mean, tell those two developers to get in here by the 20th. Well, where they're going to have a lot of people before. walk into their neighborhoods. Yes. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. I mean, so. we, would, we would be authorizing the acceptance of these roads at the October 22nd meeting. And the 30 days is going to be enough. They're going to have everything done by, if by they, the 22nd. If they don't, then we're not going to accept them. I believe Stone Ridge should definitely be ready. And maybe even a little bit sooner than that. Uh, Eagle Ridge, we still got to get our arms a little bit around the Eagle Ridge. Okay. And this does create a problem. Sometimes we request a bond, but I'm not into doing any work in the winter time. I really think that these things need to be turned over to us, ready to go. And I think that, that I don't think that's unreasonable. Again, I don't want to I don't want to hurt the people in the community because you bought a house, you expected it to be on the town road, and you know I think that that's a good thing. So, John, you okay do you want, oh, do you want to add Eagle Ridge to this? Yeah, okay. I got a letter later today and some calls and they okay. requested that also so if we could and i'll make you a copy of the letter okay. carol you probably didn't receive i just received it later okay. late no. okay any other discussion no just that i've received a lot of calls from both eagle ridge residents stone ridge residents um you know they don't want to go down to the bottom for the kids for the school bus and yeah i you know it's i don't think it's right they shouldn't have to yeah. I can't blame them. So. I mean, but I'm not against holding the bond. If they don't have it, if they've got enough to get yeah, through no, the winter. No, we have to have the performance bond anyway. No, we, yeah, we, when we take it over. What's we, missing we on the project? A maintenance bond. We're not sure. What's, well, do we know what's missing for them to turn it over to us? Stone Ridge, we have a good handle on. Uh, Eagle Ridge, I think Dennis yeah, is Eagle Ridge, go back we just got there. the request today. So yeah, we, we just have, we yeah, gotta, we we have to go, go back out. Thing, but Stone so Ridge. if you need an extra bond or something, we well, they post the maintenance bond. Or is right. that in the case bond? of Stone Ridge, I don't see there's any reason why they shouldn't be able no. to get everything yeah. completed. And if Peter says if there's something, I don't know, if it's something we consider would be reasonable that could be bonded because it can't be done until spring, I think we could do that too. We can bond it and just hold it. But a I'm more. very, very unhappy that oh yeah, I agree. we're at this point again. <laughs> yep. But that being said, um, we have a motion. We have a second. Sure. Um, all those in favor, Madam Clerk, will you poll the board, please? Yes. Councilperson Cassidy. Aye. Councilperson D'Alessandro. Aye. Councilperson Franco. Aye. Councilperson Marinaro. Aye. Supervisor Hickman. Aye. Uh, the resolution passes. Thank you very much.
Um, with that, I would just urge developers, please get your work done, and uh, we'll accept this, these roads at the next town board meeting. And thank you very much. Second resolution is to authorize reappointment of Lisa Argyle to the Board of Assessment Review for a five-year term. Uh, Councilman Cassidy, would you read the resolution, please? Got it. Whereas the town assessor is advised that the term of the member of Board of Assessment Review will expire on September 30th, 2015, and whereas it is desired the town board to reappoint, now therefore it be resolved that Lisa Argyle of Hopewell Junction, New York, be and hereby be reappointed to the Board of Assessment Review. The term for her reappointment is from 10-1-2015 to 9-30-2020. Thank you, Councilman. Do I have a motion to authorize reappointment of Lisa Argyle to the Board of Assessment Review for a five-year term? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Madam Clerk, will you poll the board? Councilperson Cassidy. Aye. Councilperson D'Alessandro. Aye. Councilperson Marinaro. Aye. Councilperson Franco. Aye. Supervisor Hickman. Aye. Five ayes. The motion is passed. Thank you very much. Number, uh, resolution number three, confirming the acceptance of certain roads by the town. This is the one I should have had you read. This is a highway one, Peter. Um, Give that one to Nick. No. Councilman Franco, would you like to read uh, draft number, yes. uh, resolution whereas number three? Whereas over the years, the town has accepted many subdivision roads as town highways, and whereas it has been determined that many have not been added to the New York State inventory of town roads, and it is the desire of the town board and highway superintendent to clarify the status of the annexed roads and add them to the road inventory. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the roads set forth on the annexed schedule are all accepted as town roads in East Fishkill, and be it further resolved that the highway superintendent is authorized to apply to have the roads in the annexed schedule added to the inventory of town roads. Thank you, Councilman. And Tom, would you just explain a little bit about this, this resolution here? Yes, uh, in reviewing and, and going through the list, every road in the town is added to a list in New York State DOT. Uh, DOT has some questions about uh, their records with respect to some of these roads, which were accepted 10, 15 years ago. So they've asked for a confirming resolution from the town board. So once this is adopted, the highway superintendent will give it to DOT to make sure that these uh, remain on our inventory of uh, public roads. Thank you. Uh, that being said, do I have a motion to confirm the acceptance of these of this list of roads by the town? So, so second. I have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, will you poll the board? Councilperson Cassidy. Aye. Councilperson D'Alessandro. Aye. Councilperson Franco. Aye. Councilperson Marinaro. Aye. Supervisor Hickman. Aye. Five ayes. The motion is passed. Thank you very much. That's it for the resolutions for this evening. Uh, I ask the town controller, do we have any budget transfers for this evening? Not this evening. No, we do not? Okay. All righty. Next on the agenda is to take public, public comments on general town issues. If there's anybody in the audience who would like to speak on general town issues, uh, comments will be taken. And if some issues may take time for review, consideration, and research, responses from the board may not be given at this time or it may be given at another meeting. Public is, always has the ability to meet with any member of the town board to discuss any town, is, town issues. Thank you very much. So anybody like to speak on any general town issues, please come up to the podium. Good evening. I'm Malcolm Mills. I live on Blue Hill Road. Good evening to the town board. I'm still very concerned, of course, about uh, the property on the other side of the road. And uh, I happened to be on the jury pool in Poughkeepsie uh, a week ago, and uh, I tried to find out um, where this um, legal uh, claim against the town board is from the developer, which caused the town board to um, work with the, town, with the developer to give the uh, property over the other side of the road. Now, was, was there ever a legal case, a lawsuit issued? No, we filed that. I thought we had that yes, on the, the, on the website. Was filed. It was filed yes. in the Ninth Judicial District, and it was filed in White Plains at the Supreme Court White Plains. Okay, now, what, what, was, the, what was on the uh, litigation? 
I think is that on, is this on the website, Carol? It was on the website. It should okay, still we'll have be to on check there. all. It was a rather thick legal brief uh, by three three different parties, I believe, and I believe it's located on the website. Okay. What I can't understand is um, I think all the procedures that went were taken um, at Mother's Joe Mother's Road um, for appro for disapproving um, the development there uh, were quite were done quite legally and quite democratically. I, I mean, for one thing, I think it was the, th the present developer was the third who, who applied for a development there. First two were rejected, and then very wisely the town board rejected the third approval. Um, but then suddenly everything seemed to change, and uh, there was this, I, I keep hearing about this uh, lawsuit that was uh, issued by the, the developer. Yeah. Now, I, I'm wondering what was, what was his claim, because everything was done according to, as far as I know, according well, to Joseph Mother's Road, I believe the reason that we d denied that was traffic issues with the intersection yeah, and uh, but, but issues that of was, that nature. I remember one young woman, you know, one young lady speaking about that at one of our public hearings. Well, well no, I, I know why that. I'm saying that okay. it was very rightly rejected. Okay. Now, why, why would the developer sue the town? Well, you because, could, we, because we turned down something legitimately. Uh, I, don't, I mean, you could check, you could take a look at the court papers. Well, somebody but must if you know, like I mean. Give a brief well, overview I, I mean, I think I extensively went through this in the yeah. November meeting, the special meeting at the town board. And there was an Article 78 proceeding which filed with the Westchester County Clerk because you could commence an Article 78 proceeding in any uh, county within the 9th Judicial District that was filed in White Plains. Contemporaneously with that were two notices of claim filed with the town clerk. One by Abilities First, alleging violations of the Americans with Disability Act, and the other by the developer, alleging uh, violations of the Fair Housing Act and other and this uh, new, and the Federal Civil Rights Act. Those claims all stem from a decision of the New York State Court of Appeals of Berenson versus the town of Newcastle. And the reason why there was concern is because whether or not you believe that the denial on Joe's Mother's Road was correct or incorrect, the law of New York State is that town zoning ordinances must not be exclusionary. You cannot have an ordinance that excludes a certain type of housing. You cannot have an ordinance that uh, supports all single family uh, homeowners as opposed to rental housing and the ability to have a density that allows housing to be affordable to all residents mm -hmm. of a community. Mm -hmm. It's based on a regional study which is done every five years by the planning departments of the counties within various regions. We are linked with Orange County and with Ulster County. That study is also available. I think that's references yep. online. So in the totality of all of those things, the Berenson case, Continental build Builders, the lawsuit against Westchester County by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, and some other groups there, and the, uh, all of the other aspects of it, led the town board to deliberate and to choose to resolve uh, not only the specific Article 78 against the Joe's Mother's Road, but the claimed violation that was to come, the lawsuit that was to come, with respect to the zoning ordinance. Because if you are unsuccessful in defending your zoning ordinance, the entire zoning ordinance is invalidated. And you have to go through a specific site-specific zoning of properties to allow what a judge determines to be the fair number of um, rental units, et cetera. So in the totality of that situation in November, we sat here at a special town board meeting, went through all those issues, and the town board agreed to amend the zoning ordinance to eliminate the exclusionary um, issue, and at the same time, resolved any other claims that we might have by selling a piece of property to the developer who then went through the planning board process to get approval under the zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tom. And if you have any so, questions about the legal brief that was filed, if it's still not on the website, you're more than welcome to come in. The town clerk can give you a copy, and you can sit down and take a look at okay, it. Okay, but, but um, what I don't understand is why um, we had an ordinance um, on the books. Well, you can come and take a look at the no, lawsuit. No, we had an ordinance on the books, though, for yeah. uh, housing, yeah. for low-cost housing or for, um, for a for, for handicapped housing, for seniors. You, you, so, so, I mean, it's all spelled why, out it, in the it, lawsuit. It was on, I, I just don't understand. Mm -hmm. We had those ordinances on the books. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if some, and there was no reason, it was just the fact that the developer chose the wrong site. No, if you, read, if you read the cases I've cited, the law that we had was defective in that it required the town board to grant a special permit each and every time a site was chosen to apply the workforce housing law to. Mm -hmm. That is the constitutional right. impediment. Yeah. Okay, but I don't okay. see why the town board then did the job of a realtor and found a site and found a site and found a site mm -hmm. for the Well, if developer. you had attended it's, the I mean, public hearings, yeah. many of the residents who were opposed to Joe's Mother's Road raised to the town board in the public hearing mm -hmm. uh, the fact that the property so, across the street that the town had acquired would be it. a great site. Uh, yeah. I, I was Ex at, I was Excuse at, me, though, I, and I don't want to really get into a back and forth, yeah. but why don't you stop in and take a look at the lawsuit? I think it would answer a lot of your questions because they go into quite a bit of detail okay. about All right. these the, matters. The, the second point I have on this is, uh, d did the town really have the authority to sell that piece of land to the developer? I thought that when the town sold property, mm -hmm. uh, according, according to the municipal um, regulations, the town has to go out for three bids on something that is yeah, town-owned property? We did, but I'm, I'm, yeah, we did. We put no, that no, on no, 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 no. Oh, we not for not. this one. Real property, if it's going to be sold, the town board has the right to adopt a resolution to, to sell it. It is subject to permissive referendum, so it was posted and published in the official newspaper of the town. There's a 30-day period for residents to object. If they do not object, then the town board has the right to sell the property. You're right, and I, I got to just excuse uh, me. I was mistaken because you remember when you were part of the group, we looked at doing a housing project across the street also. Right. We put out three uh, uh, requests for proposals for that one. I believe you were involved with that project yeah, you across did. the street. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you put them out to three different developers. Yes, you got three. Did, yep. But that was that side of the of the uh, property, that was, that not, was the, not project the other across side across of the property. Street. This was, a, this was uh, our brush drop off site. I know it yeah. was, yeah. Okay. But I just, I just feel that all that time and effort that everybody put into that uh, project has been wasted. I wouldn't uh, because say because that property now, is still what there. What it means now is then that the, the developer, and I thought tonight was supposed to be the night when he was going to, to conclude the uh, arrangement uh, with the town board. I don't there seemed to be some hurry or rush about getting it done. But anyway, the, um, the point is that when it is built, the, the residents of that property, of those mm -hmm. 89 or whatever it is, houses, will have access to that green land mm -hmm. that is owned by the town, yet the town residents ho don't have access to it. No, that, that's Why untrue. We? They, they will only have access to the 20 acres that's the site of the development. The rest of the property can only be accessed by them when any other resident of the town can access yeah, it. Are you going to put a fence the around it? Are, you going to put a fen I, I, are they going to put a fence around it then? It's certainly not going to have uh, regular pathways no. leading to it, etc. No, no, but I mean it is Well, open. I don't know. You could check the site plan that was yeah. approved and see the barriers. They're getting, they're getting how, many, how many acres are they getting? 23. 20. 20. 20.1 20, 20, 20 20 something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the acreage mm -hmm. that they're getting. And the ones that we had looked at when we worked with you on doing a project across the street was off to the other side of it. Uh, but and you did go out for three bids on that one. Yes, we did. Okay. And we but looked at them. You, I remember we reviewed the uh, Well, the excuse proposal. me. I, I think you're using the word bid. That's not, a three, proposal. There were requests for proposals Correct. to see what type of different development types developers might present. It did not bind the town no. into choosing one over the other based on any price, et cetera. It gave the town board, or would have given the town board had they gone that way, the ability to choose a design, a style, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you, why, why, did, why did the town not proceed, proceed with that one? Because I think we oh, were, we, talk, we were we talking. We one bid, I think, for that Yeah, there yeah. was only one proposal. Yeah, okay. Well, and we had talked about I remember you wanted um, some kind of housing, I forget. You wanted the, Correct, the senior, small. Correct, senior citizens, yeah, yeah senior, yeah, senior for, citizens. But you wanted the, single, the little single housing units. Not necessarily, the cottage, no, we, we were talking about, no, we were talking about um, the low-cost housing uh, at the back yeah. of it. To yeah, oh, low, that's low right, cost, that's low, right. Low buildings in the front and, yeah. and taller buildings in the back. Yeah. Um, no, I'm we, just very disappointed. I think we've, we've, the town has, has lost a great opportunity. Well, I don't when think it could, we're not, not going to do it. I think we're still going to go forward. Yeah, I'm with surprised. That, that yes, problem. but still there? absolutely, yeah. your vision and everything was wonderful. Yeah. I know, but the vision has been spoiled because you've now got 98 houses on the 60, other side by the first. It's 89. 89. 89. Well, I, I apologize mm -hmm. if I got my numbers wrong. 
Anyway, thank you very much for the okay. opportunity to discuss it. And feel free to stop in and take a look at the lawsuit any time. It's very, very detailed. Okay, thank you. Anybody else in the audience like to speak on any general town items? Good evening. Um, I was watching the uh, workshop session, and you guys had discussed about signs uh, that, you know, trying to get uh, about the signage oh, signs, for the yep. town. Yeah. Does, I, I, I'm wondering, does the town have some sort of theme, for lack of a better word, or, or some vision that they would like to see this town look like? I, like maybe they do in Fishkill, mm -hmm. for for example. Uh, is there anything that, that we have in mind? Our planner's working on that. She works with other, other towns, and she's going to bring us proposals what other towns do and stuff like that. I have nothing off the top of my head to tell you we're going to have big green or big orange signs, yeah, but I, she's, yeah, going, to, she's I, going to bring us a propose, or an idea, a design ideas. I don't even mean so much for the signs mm -hmm. as whatever else may follow that does do we have anything like uh i just i'll refer to fish Guild because for me when i drive through there it seems like uh i don't want to say everything is in order hmm? uh, i'm not saying that we're, we're not but i mean it, it seems like uh the town is maintained to a certain not sure of the word that I'm looking for well, right we, now. Well, I think well, we do have an architectural review board. Yeah, but I think what you're meaning, Fishkill, I know exactly what you're talking about. When you enter off of Route 9 onto Main Street up until the post office, that's yeah. a historical, those buildings are in a historical district. Okay. So they're under more scrutiny and they, right. can, they can only do certain changes to the buildings. Right. We don't have that. But okay. I understand what you mean. All right. Thank you. Mr. Supervisor, members of the town board, my name is John Curzio, and I'm standing here tonight feeling much sadness for the town I love. As we all know, the Comptroller of the State of New York has designated East Fishkill as having significant fiscal stress. Out of 1,000 municipalities across New York, East Fishkill has fallen in the bottom 15. In other words, more than 98% of municipalities are rated higher than East Fishkill for fiscal strength and fiscal responsibility. Honestly, I wish I could say I was surprised to hear the news, but frankly, I'm not. Three members of the town board are business owners. If you gentlemen ran your businesses in the same manner in which you run the town, you would be out of business. Over the past year, several, <clears throat> excuse me, several individuals, including myself, have warned of the irresponsible management of the town budget and taxpayer money in general. In fact, the Comptroller's Office has released a statement that says a solution to this fiscal crisis is sensible budgeting. That means to start not giving yourselves pay increases year after year, not awarding yourselves pensions, not spending $20,000 on counting trees when we could have given that task to the Boy Scouts, and finally not burying the town under $24 million in debt. Mr. Supervisor, at the last meeting, you said that $24 million in debt is responsible because as a town, we are allowed up to $200 plus million in debt. But that's the same as saying that I have car payments to make, and it's okay if I miss a couple of payments because they're not going to repossess my car unless I miss this number of payments. Just because something is allowed does not make it right, nor does it make it responsible. Also, Mr. Supervisor, I know that you have stated that most of the debt is due to water and sewer districts. About four months ago, one other individual and myself advised you to call a town leader to our south for advice on how to minimize the costs for a sewer district, someone who successfully managed that, uh, that issue in their town. Sadly, your response was, don't worry about it. We have it under control. We have very smart people. Mr. Supervisor, I don't doubt the intelligence of yourself, the board, or any other town employee, but there is no one that knows everything, and in some cases, it's necessary to surround yourself with people, in most cases, in a lot of cases, to surround yourself with people that have more experience and knowledge on that matter. 
And I'm very concerned with the fact during the, the time that the town was considered to be in good financial shape, taxes increased between 2 and 4 percent. And honestly, I'm a little afraid to see the budget and the tax increase that this board will pass in the upcoming town budget. I feel it's important to add that I do not doubt the good intentions of this board, but good intentions do not, equal good, uh, do not always equal good results. And I believe this board has given their best attempt to fix this uh, issue, but sadly this board has fallen so very short. Thank you. I would just like to say, I guess, that you weren't here for the beginning of the opening statement regarding the New York State Comptroller's report. Um, again, and I'll ask the Comptroller, I believe that outstanding general town debt is less than $2 million, correct? Um, there's a little more than two, I think, in the highway and then the million across the, the okay. street. And okay. the rest so is about water. three million so something in that general town debt. All right. Now, I'm just curious, and our bond reading is... Double A two. Double A two, and we had a we had a, we did have a Moody's uh, uh, conference call last year. We discussed a lot of things with Moody's. I think things are running very well. I'm not sure where these these two to four percent tax increase numbers come from, but I would disagree with the young gentleman that just spoke, and I think the town is doing very well. Again, I was a little surprised, but that's a, the state controller uh, basing their report on one report from our AUD in 2014. So that's basically all that I have to say. i like to make a few comments. Um, <clears throat> the young gentleman said that, you know, we're three of us are business owners, and we are, and the town has to be run like a business. And what do businesses have? They have a rainy day fund, and mm -hmm. that's what we have. And that's why we appropriate some of our fund balance in the last two and three budget cycles so we don't have to raise taxes above our tax cap. We have stayed under the tax cap every single budget. Now, I don't know what the state controller thinks we should do if he thinks they think we should raise taxes so we have more of a surplus. I don't agree with that. I think that we should use the rainy day fund when we have the rainy days. We have a plan of action to replenish our rainy day fund. We're going to be selling property possibly across the street, replenish our rainy day fund, and we'll be well over 20 percent, maybe cl close to, of what we should be, right? The state controller says we should have 10 to 20 percent of our budget set aside. Is that correct? Yeah, and I would expect to be at around 20 percent at the end of this year. And then they'll tell you it's too much. So at one point, didn't the state controller tell us we had too much money in our yeah. rainy day account? So if we were the strongest town a couple of years ago in the whole county, and now we're being flagged as fiscally, what was the word? Um, stressed. Yeah. stressed. I, I don't understand what we should do. What else should we do for our, for our residents? In my opinion, is to keep taxes low. We never mm -hmm. broke into tax cap. We have 24 million in debt, like the young man said, 3 million outstanding for all the town residents, the rest in water and sewer, which we've just passed a wellhead law to protect because we need more water districts to, to help people. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I commend this board. Yeah. Thank you for all that we've done together. Absolutely. And you know, that's kind of the philosophical question. What do you do? You have fund balance, and through some of the toughest years, when we didn't take raises through the recession, we supplemented the budget with some ta with some of our budget surplus because you know save the taxpayers the burden. So we're always working at this. Is and, and, and a budget surplus or a fund balance, I should say, is always moving up and down. And, and correct me if I'm wrong. Have we has any services suffered? Have we laid off any police officers? Any no. town employees? The people have left. We've left by attrition, and we looked very very carefully to see if we're going to replace them. So no town services have. Decreased, have they? No, no. And so, we, we, I don't know what else we could do yeah. or who else could do if they have a magic yeah. wand. And the problem is, I mean, when you're in the middle of a winter like we've been having and we budget, say, now this year we're going to budget a million dollars, a little over a million dollars towards snow removal. Typically, we would we budget around seven or eight hundred thousand dollars. And what happened, I think, in 2012 was about six hundred and eighty thousand dollars for snow removal. So we were good. Uh, 2013, I think it went up to like 800,000. So we're still in the ballpark. But last year was what, 1.12 for 2014, and this year is high. So what we're going to do is we're going to budget more for snow removal, and actually still stay below the tax cap and balance our budget. So I think we're in good shape. 
we will be presenting the budget to the town board uh, in the next week and a half. Mark. Yes. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Supervisor, my name is Claudia Heckard. I'm the tax receiver. The, um, the gentleman that just spoke about the tax increase, as, as all of you on the board know, um, over 80% of your tax dollars go to the school districts yes. and are not used um, for the town purposes. Um, nevertheless, the 4% is completely inaccurate, and I would welcome um, that gentleman and any other general people in our town to call my office and make an appointment. Uh, I can certainly sit down and go over uh, several years worth of tax figures uh, to allay any concerns. Okay. Uh, my office number is 845-221-2160 and we're there 830 to 330. Thank you very much. That's a very good point. And one thing when people pay their taxes because we have the luxury, I guess, of, of collecting all taxes. Here we collect school taxes, which typically in the Wapner Central School District, I believe that the town taxes were about 12, 12 to 14 percent of your total tax bill. So when you pay your tax bill, you know, we only get a percentage of that, as does Dutchess County. So thank Mark, you very much. A uh, quick question sure. Mark. That uh, fiscal stress designation that the controller put upon us, once we reach that 20 percent, once we reach that 20 percent, do they immediately take that designation away or do we have to wait another year? It's not year? quite that simple. You know, it'll, they do this once a year based on the annual financial report that we submit. Um, there's five different categories. Um, fund balance is the main driver. They also look at cash positions and uh, deficits and other things like that. Um, I would say there's virtually no chance that we won't move up from the position we're in for the 2015 review. Um, we don't have access to the precise formula that they use, you know, but based on what I've seen. Um, and I think, again, it, it should be looked at as a tool. It's not a definitive statement of any sort. It's kind of taking a picture of certain elements. And I think we should listen, make sure, but this isn't something new to us. We've been talking about whether we want to use fund balance, we mm -hmm. want to have a balanced budget, you know, for the last three years. So, um, yeah. and that we have a plan, they're not necessarily aware of that. No. Or um, of the all the circumstances involved. They're looking at several key indicators and it's a black and white formula. They issue the issue the report, but I would be very surprised if we're on that report yeah. when it's issued for the 2015 year. Yeah, we started out we this year. We're still very strong. I believe at the end of this year we'll have a $2 million fund balance and I think we're well on track. Yes. Uh, the only thing I got on that, um, the money that we've lent the $300,000 here and the $200,000 there to the different departments or different projects. Projects. Now, when that gets paid back to the town, to the general fund, does that get paid interest? Well, it depends on what we're talking about. So, for instance, we've spent. We lent $300,000 to the waterheads over the water, the wells. Yeah, something across like the street. that, yes. But other things where we're forwarding money for. Uh, the, the Switzerland break. project, you know, we're going to get reimbursed through a, a grant. The There's cost. no necessary right. interest charge to that. So. Yeah, that's all I want to know. Any other questions? <clears throat> yeah, I have a suggestion. I mean, uh, for the last couple of years, I met with uh, Mark, the, the controller, and we always discuss issues about fund balance. And many times uh, the discussion came that we should build the fund balance and how to do it. Uh, a few times in different meetings, I had made suggestions that we should really sit together with the, with the controller and really discuss uh, how to bring this fund balance to where we are all comfortable, mm -hmm. that we don't have to really worry if in case something happens that we have no money. Uh, this is a wake-up wake up call. I mean, I don't like that we ended up in the papers. Uh, that's not the way to do it. To spend money there, uh, I understand it's, it's important because it is for the community. But at the end of the day, uh, taking suggestions where uh, we should really be careful uh, where we're going. Because if in case there is an issue, and we never know, then we do not have the funds available to take care of the issue, the business of the town. Uh, I will make, I will take this opportunity to really, sh I hope that the board and the controller we met again this morning, we, we agree that really we should have a serious discussion how to constantly build a fund balance. The economy is what it is. 
I guess we all agree. I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. Uh, building construction is not going on. Uh, private construction that brings revenue into the town. Uh, so we really have to see, look at the picture of what we have you know, <clears throat> as a board. I mean, that's what we do in the private. Uh, if business is slow one day, so we, we see. We don't order stuff. Mm -hmm. We see our merchandise is. We reduce the cost. We don't increase the cost because, again, you don't know what next week could be. I mean, we all hope that we do better, but then we know that certain months business is slow. So, uh, again, I don't like to see our name in the papers. I'm very unhappy about that. But uh, I would like to see this board really discuss okay. from now on, sit with the controller. And I made this suggestion in the past. Uh, yeah. Really, to constantly uh, see how we could build this fund balance. Okay. So, I am not upset about it. The only thing that bothers me is that his fish scale is in the Poughkeepsie Journal. Uh, it, it does bother me, but I, I would really strongly take this opportunity. We should meet with the controller at least, I would say probably four times a year, every quarter, mm -hmm. and say, you know, where are we going? How can we do things? Uh, where are we spending money that probably we could save? Working together, I think we could bring, you know, the following balance. He is comfortable with uh, 2.5 to $3 million. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it, it, it's something beneficial to all of us. But the reality is that the economy is what it is. So, you know, yeah. we, I don't want to raise taxes, that's for sure. I mean, that's the, no. that, that would be on the bottom of my list. But at the same time, we have to take care of the town, the town business. Mm -hmm. uh, please, yeah. uh, let's make an effort to make this important meeting uh, a reality because really sitting with him and taking the input and where can we go to better and build this fund balance from now on. Thank you. Thank you. And again, it gets down, we get that, the, the philosophical question, how much fund balance should you have on hand? Because it is the taxpayer's taxes most of the time, so you have fund balance, so you don't want to, you don't want to be taxing unfairly building up. It's a, it's a very delicate balance because we still have to provide services. Um, but absolutely, we're going to have that meeting, actually. Um, I'm going to submit my budget bylaw to the town clerk, I believe. When is that? September, September 30th. 30th. Next, 30th. next week, next Wednesday, I believe it is. Uh, 4 o'clock, I will submit my budget to the town clerk. Within five working days, I believe the town clerk will have a special town board meeting. The town clerk will then uh, provide the, um, my budget to the town board. It goes from, I think mine's a tentative budget, tentative, becomes yes. a pre pre preliminary budget. At that point, the town board will have a few weeks to look at the budget, and we're going to have a workshop, I believe, when did you say the workshop was going to be in October? 15th. Was, I thought 15. we changed it. I thought we made it later. I'll have to check on the workshop, but the October workshop it, it is going to be a round table of everybody and the controller to talk about the budget, back and forth, what ideas, what can be changed. Um, last year I cut the budget to the bone. This year I cut the bone. So, uh, and, and, and I couldn't agree more. I don't think the economy is going to recover anytime soon. But on the other hand, I will say we are doing things here in the town of East Fishkill. As far as this law, uh, the I-Zone uh, property uh, to sub the subdivision law, this is the one of the things we are doing to try to get more businesses down to the East, Fish down to the East Fishkill Global Foundry site, um, the former IBM West complex. We need to create incentives to have business come into East Fishkill because other because if we don't grow, we're still going to have this problem. And growth is very important, especially industrial businesses. And that's, that's what I'm thinking. That's, that's my vision for moving forward. Um, but we're certainly going to discuss this at the workshop in October. And I couldn't agree more. It's very, very important for all of us to sit down and put our heads together. So I'll have my budget. It's almost done. And the clerk will have it next Wednesday. We'll have a board. Then the board will have it to work on. You know, one other comment I want to make, how to create real uh, businesses in our community. Uh, we met a couple of times with the town engineer. Uh, we do have a lot of empty stores in some of the plazas. That is very important for us to really sit down and decide, you know, how are we going to bring business in our community? Mm -hmm. You know, the business uh, uh, aspect is business goes where they feel comfortable with the tax and rules and regulations. So as far as I'm concerned, this is the pitch that I make to, to the board and to 
the leaders of a town is that we really need to encourage new business in our town uh, to fill the spaces, the mm -hmm. vacant spaces that we have, and to work with the business community when they come in. This really will help us in the, in, mm -hmm. in the future years. I mean, that's, that's a reality that we have to really make it happen. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, we, 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 we discussed this in private, mm -hmm. but I want to share with the community and the rest of the board that that is, to me, very important to really bring some real money. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I think that's why we do these things. The industrial zone, I think that's so important. I'm happy that we finally got this done. Yeah. Uh, you know, Dutchess County hailed us saying that we were the first town in the whole county to come up and do this without any anybody else to push us along. Yeah. And the small businesses in our town, I agree with the councilman, it's the backbone. That's why, you know, I go out there and I try and meet with these people and I, and I try and give them some free advertising. And I think it's so important, it helps all those people out. And the more people that come in and help and spend money in our town, that helps our town out also. And I, I couldn't agree more that we need to build our fund balance. Uh, if we get the more bigger companies into the industrial zones, they're going to they're gonna fill. They're, the people who are going to visit our local businesses, they're going to spend money there, generate sales tax, everything else. And Absolutely. I think that's the only way because we can't, we can't raise taxes. We can't no. break the cap. And we have to uh, <laughs> work with what we got. Yeah. And Build a lot of people space. criticize. People, some people say they don't want to cut any town services. We don't want to cut town services. No. That's why we don't break the tax cap. That's why. How are we going to uh, pay for all the double-digit increases of health care insurance, pension benefits, we have to still pay those yeah. and still stay under a tax cap. So how do we do that? We cut everything else. The supervisor cuts the yeah. budget. That's what we do. That We have to do it. So we have no choice. We're looking forward to a very good budget session come the October workshop. All right. Uh, if there's no other business, do I have a motion to adjourn the town board meeting? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Um, the next voting meeting is October 22nd. The DOT meeting is October 22nd. And also we will be posting the workshop for the budget uh, in October. Thank you very much.